Hi, I am Dr. Lee from the Department of Medicine. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Nasri Mustafa, Dr. Noaizal Che Hamza, staff from the Clinical Skills Lab, as well as staff from the AVA unit, and of course our patient here for willing to help out in the production of this video. This video serves as a revision aid and demonstration aid to the technique and skills in the examination of the gastrointestinal system. The doctor will introduce himself to the patient. He will inform the patient that he will perform a physical examination. After that, he will position the patient properly. Exposure of the patient has to be adequate but yet modest. For abdomen examination, expose the patient from the level of the nipple till the level of pubic hairline. The patient should also be lying flat in a supine position with both hands by the sides. Go to the end of the bed for general observation of the patient. Assess the mental state in general for both alertness and rationality. Altered conscious state such as hepatic encephalopathy. From the end of the bed, also observe for cachexia, jaundice and pallor. Next, go to the hands and gently raise it at eye level to look for clubbing of fingers. Pay attention to the angle between the nail and the nail bed. The nail will whiten in hypoalbuminemia or we term it Leuconychia. Then look at patient's palm for palmar erythema and dupotrans contracture. Both signs are indicative of chronic liver disease. Before leaving the hand, look for hepatic flap. Raise both arms and hands at right angles and cock the wrist back. The hands will flap if positive. This is another sign of hepatic encephalopathy. Proceed the inspection up to both arms looking for other evidence of chronic liver disease, including wasting, spider nevi, bruises, and scratch marks, presence of atrovenous fistula, such as adult polycystic kidney disease, which requires dialysis as chronic renal failure approaches. Next, look at the face. Check the conjunctiva for presence of jaundice and pallor. Jaundice is another sign of chronic liver disease. 
If both jaundice and pallor are present, suspect hemolytic anemia. Check the mouth for ulcers which may be present in inflammatory bowel disease, telangiectasia as in hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, leukoplakia, which is a pre-malignant lesion, and glossitis, which is a sign of anemia. Hyperpigmented areas of the gums and buccal mucosa suggest Pugh's Jagger's syndrome. Before going to the abdomen proper, look at the chest for spider nevi. Use a ruler, a clear ruler, and branch on the spider nevi. In male patients, look for presence of gynecomasia and a decrease in the chest or axillary hairs. These are signs of chronic liver disease. Also, check the legs for presence of Pitting edema, which is present in hypoalbuminemia. The whole process of general inspection and peripheral examination should only take about 1 to 2 minutes with practice. Then we will go to the specific abdomen examination. The steps follow through steps of look, feel and listen as shown in the slide. The first step is inspection or look. A good overview should be obtained from above and the sight of the patient. Observe the movement of the abdomen. It will be quiet in peritonitis as any movement may elicit pain. Are there any visible peristaltic movement which may indicate bowel obstruction? Look at the appearance of the abdomen. Is it distended? And if distended, is it symmetrical? Gross distension will give the doctor an idea for ascites, especially if accompanied by fullness of flanks. Asymmetrical distension denotes presence of mass lesion. An inverted umbilicus can also give similar clues. Any scars should be mentioned as this may indicate underlying symptoms or diseases. Presence of prominent veins may indicate chronic liver disease or venous thrombosis in major veins. Carpet medusa for example are prominent which radiate out from umbilicus. Look for stria, which may be the result of abdominal distension. Bruises may also be seen in chronic liver disease. Before touching the patient, check the inguinal areas for any enlargement which changes with cough. This suggests hernia. Next is palpation or feel. 
a light palpation should start first as this puts the patient at ease. This will detect gross abnormality and area of tenderness. Palpate in the major four quadrants. Proceed with deep palpation, which may require two hands to perform. Deep palpation will feel for and delineate any mass, including consistency, surface, size, and so on. Look for signs of peritonitis, example rebound tenderness or guarding. Next will be palpation for abdominal organs. We start with the liver and palpation begins at the right iliac fossa. The radial border of the right forefinger will feel for the liver mass during inspiration and the hand moves up during expiration. Once the inferior border of the liver is felt, determine the characteristics including the regularity of border, surface consistency, whether we can get above the mass, movement with respiration, and area of tenderness. A patient who has liver malignancy, for example, can have an enlarged liver, which is hard and nodular with an irregular margin. Next is the spleen. The palpation starts in right iliac fossa 2, but the movement is towards the left hypo Conduct region. Similarly, the radial border of right hand will move during expiration and feel during inspiration to detect the splenic mass. Once the mass is felt, feel for the characteristics as with the liver palpation. Try to feel for the splenic notch. The patient may need to be put in the right lateral position to better feel for the spleen. Another important organ will be the kidneys. It is better to blot than palpate the kidneys. This means that we put the right hand above and the left hand below the renal angle on each side in succession. We try to bounce up the kidney using our right hand and feel for the kidney with the left. Percussion. Percuss for the upper and lower border of the liver. Based on the previous finding of liver size.